Today we'll be making a molten salt battery out of common components. The electrolyte is a mix of potassium chloride, which tastes kind of like salt paper, and lithium chloride, which is not something you want to taste. The electrodes are going to be made out of nickel and magnesium. The whole thing is going to be heated up to about 400 degrees, which is good, because magnesium ignites at about 600 degrees. If it was a little bit more like nickel, which doesn't really care about getting heated up, then we could go to higher temperature. As it is, we have to use a neurotactic mixture. Now, why do we need two salts? The problem is the potassium chloride melts at 770 degrees, while lithium chloride at 610. But put together, they form a eutectic mixture, which will melt at about 350 degrees, if put in a molar ratio of 60 to 40, which is the counting the number of molecules. In terms of weight, that means for every gram of lithium, you need 1.26 gram of potassium, or 45 gram ratio, which is what we are going to weight out now. Time for a proof of concept. Take magnesium into the negative hand and nickel into the positive hand, and we get a voltage. Now, a fresh and hot electrolyte should give you about 1.6 volts, but since it's already cooled down a little, there's a crust of salt forming on the electrodes, and the voltage is a little bit lower. It's also uncomfortable for many other reasons to experiment with, so I think it's a good idea to figure out how to build a more or less proper kind of cell out of it. The simplest form is a flat cell, where we have two electrodes and a separator in between them. In our case, that's a piece of a fiberglass cloth. Now, there are no duct tape to hold things together at these temperatures. So, making sure the electrodes don't come apart is going to be kinda tricky, to say the least. The fiberglass glass absorbs molten salt quite easily. There are no problems getting it wet. Once the electrolyte is molten, it's quite easy to keep it that way on a simple electric heater. Removed into free air, the separator becomes solid quite fast, so you have to make sure that it is straight before you remove it. Now let's move to the actual assembly of the cell. Nickel is the easy part, you just put it on a heater and fix it in place. The separator is also no problem, because it sticks to the electrode and the heater like wet close to a piece of metal, which is exactly what it is. Magnesium, on the other hand, requires something to hold it in place. Something like a crucible full of molten salt. What could possibly go wrong? Well, the good news is I do get a voltage out of this rig. As long as I don't short out the wires which turned out to be quite easy to do accidentally. 
All the attempts at restraining the wires didn't end uh, well. <sighs> Alright, let's just pretend that there is no wire at the top electrode and measure it that way. I get the same 1.4 volts of more or less a fresh battery. So, what can we power with this thing? The voltage is not quite enough to power an LED directly, so I use a dual thief circuitry, which is a simple boost converter. The battery have no problems powering a small green LED, which is kind of not surprising. How about powering something a little bit larger, like this 3 watt white LED? It lights up without a problem, but it's kind of dim. It's probably not the battery's fault, but rather the jewel thief can provide enough current. So, is it the battery or the jewel thief? If it's the former, then the voltage should be at about half a volt or so. And we're getting well over a volt, so it's just the jewel thief not being able to provide enough current. Let's measure the short circuit current of the cell. Molten cell batteries are known for being able to provide a lot of current in a small package. I don't expect much from this homemade contraption, but still 160, 150 milliamps out of what is essentially a tiny coin cell is quite impressive, if not exactly extraordinary. After such a short circuit test, we should expect a voltage sag, which we can try to measure. I think it should be somewhere around 1.2, 1.3 volts, remembering the shorting wires earlier. And that's pretty much what we get. 1.2, 1.3, depends on how far you press on it. So that was the molten salt battery, a military technology that is slowly creeping into the consumer market. There certainly are better chemistries and better techniques of making these kind of cells, but the way I did it is something you can do at home. Well, that's it. Thanks everyone for watching.